Hey guys, it's Lila Rose, and today we're doing a React video on Grey's Anatomy. So last week, Grey's Anatomy had an episode out that was extremely pro-abortion. And the episode this week was also very pro-abortion. They're basically propaganda pieces for the abortion industry. This is not a surprise because the director of this series is very pro-abortion herself and has actually served on a Planned Parenthood board. It's as if Planned Parenthood is writing the script. Bad screenwriting and also a terrible plot that supports the killing of preborn children. Let's get into it. Dr. Miranda Bailey, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to Grace Sloan as our inaugural class of out-of-state OBGYN reproductive health care and advocacy fellows. <laughs> you have traveled from... Okay, first of all, these doctors in this scene are not there to deliver babies. They're there to deliver babies that are dead that have just been killed. So that's such an important point. She's about to talk about how they're coming from all over the country because they're coming from pro-life states. So these doctors can practice in their pro-life states to do real health care, which is to, to deliver babies and to care for mothers and have better uh, pregnancy outcomes. What they're here to do is a rotation in the destruction of innocent lives through abortion procedures. But they're polishing it, right? They're having this smiling, all these young smiling faces, like this is such a beautiful thing. No, this is horrific horrific, brutal acts against children that are about to be committed under the guise of healthcare in the sterile clinic. Idaho, Arkansas, Texas, even Tennessee to be with us. And I know you'd rather be getting this clinical experience in your own residency programs. Let me translate. I know you would rather be killing babies in your home state, but it's not permitted because they respect human rights. So you've come out here to learn how to do it from me. But we are honored to offer this rotation in abortion care. Because how else are you going to learn, right? What are they going to learn to do? Let me tell you what an abortion is. So in an abortion procedure in the first trimester, there's two kinds. There's a suction DNC, and then there is a abortion pill that can be given. In an abortion pill, the child is up to 12 weeks old, and the first pill starves the baby of nutrients, so it literally withers and dies. And then the second pill forces a very bloody and sometimes violent miscarriage that the woman has, often delivering her dead baby in a toilet or on the floor of her bedroom or wherever she is. She's just bleeding profusely and it can last for weeks. And many times there's a failed abortion in that case. The baby's still alive or the baby isn't passed and she has to go back into the hospital or the clinic for a surgical abortion. In a surgical abortion, which they're also teaching here, the baby's dismembered. The baby is sucked forcefully through a tiny tube that has a sharp end. In the next trimester, the abortion that's performed involves the dismemberment of the child using forceps. And then the forceps are used to rip legs off, rip arms off the baby's torso. Well, the baby's alive and feeling the excruciating pain of this torturous death at the hands of an abortionist. And they remove the baby piece by piece. This is what these people are about to be trained to do in this TV series, and they're trying to make it look glamorous and good when it is pure evil. You've all chosen OBGYN as your specialty, and now your respective states are restricting how you practice that specialty. No, your respective straight states are restricting, thanks be to God, they're restricting the killing of human lives, which is never healthcare. The first part of the pledge of the Hippocratic Oath is do no harm, that you're not supposed to kill your patient, you're supposed to cure your patient or help your patient. And that's the exact opposite of everything that abortion is. And of course, they put a heavily pregnant doctor in training at the front of the group because they're sending the subliminal message that, oh, you can actually be pregnant and be killing other babies and it's just not gonna bother you, it will have no issue, when actually that baby in your, in your body, if you have a conscience that's not totally warped yet, should remind you I'm a life and I need protection, so why are you killing other children my same size and age? Dr. Addison Montgomery, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been to some of your states, I've seen the desperation, I've seen the pain, in the heartbreak. The desperation and the pain and the heartbreak because women are told that abortion is good for them when instead they need to be helped and served. I mean, Grey's Anatomy, their last episode on this before this one had a scene where a woman came in who had had two babies and admitted she was pregnant, she was worried. They did some tests. They found out that the baby was alive and perfectly healthy in her womb. And then Grey's Anatomy wrote into their plot that the woman shared that she had postpartum depression, which is horrible. Many women suffer that and suffer it alone. And she shared that because she had postpartum depression, she wasn't feeling ready to have this baby. And you know what they did in Grey's Anatomy? You know what they, their doctor did? 
killed her baby as some sort of a treatment plan for her postpartum depression. How utterly insane and cruel and completely a lie about the healthcare options that are available for women. And that's the reality. Abortion is never medically necessary. Thousands of medical experts agree, despite the lies coming from uh, abortion industry and abortion allies in this country. And there are doctors that love them both, that care for both mother and child as patients, as both patients. The intentional direct killing of a baby is never medically necessary. Sometimes an early delivery might be necessary or a treatment might be necessary that could have a bad outcome on the baby in the case of cancer or some other extreme medical scenario. But the reality is going in there to destroy the baby's body is not medical treatment. Never was, never will be. And it's a pure lie coming from these filmmakers to try to make abortion acceptable. I've seen lives lost. Yeah, lives lost like the 2,500 children killed every single day legally in this country. Those are the lives that are being lost. Women who lose their lives during pregnancy are not losing their lives because they don't have abortion. They're losing their lives because they're not getting good health care. Abortion does not save, save life. It takes life. So anyway, who's ready to get to work? Of course, there's, this is so adult centric. Like that's the other thing about these, these videos and so much of entertainment media today. It's so obsessed with adults. It's so obsessed with the strong, the powerful who go around, you know, looking glamorous or looking successful or looking free and they forget children. They forget children because children can't defend themselves. They can't speak out. They can't lobby. They can't advocate. And they of course are forgetting and they're not just forgetting, but in this series, they're actually advocating for the killing of children in the womb because they're deemed inconvenient or a threat in some way. Either way, we got some protesters outside. They're trying to block the entrance. Well, well there's always a few. They usually peace. Okay, first I have to say something really important. Yes, of course there's pro-life protesters as there should be outside an abortion clinic, but guess what? There's also tons of pro-life medical professionals even though they're being pressured every day to not be pro-life. But Grey's Anatomy is already setting up this false construct that every doctor in a white coat is pro-abortion and that there's these pro-life protesters outside the door to get them. No, there's a lot of pro-life OBGYNs. In fact, there's thousands of them at the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists who are pro-life. And they're proudly pro-life doctors. So already Grey's Anatomy is lying to you about what med the medical world looks like today. Full? Fine, peaceful. Okay, I've been to probably hundreds of pro-life events. They do not look like that. They don't look like that. Um, the pro-abortion counter-protests look like that. But the pro-life events, many of them are silently praying. Many of them are trying to counsel at abortion clinics, women going in to save lives. Uh, this is just, again, they've created this trope, this, this anti-pro-life trope to try to again, paint pro-lifers this way to try to make abortion popular and making make pro-life be unpopular. And it's a complete lie. And it's like these scary, evil pro-lifers who want to save babies, who want to save lives. That's what their hope is. I need the abortion. Six weeks. Oh, thank God. Oh. Andrew's my support system. We're best friends, born two days apart. Our mom was met in Lamaze class. Now we're both pregnant, except I don't want to be. So here we are. I brought snacks and so sad because they're saying their best friends and their moms met when they were pregnant and here they are both pregnant again and potentially the future best friend of one of the woman's babies is about to be killed in this scene. You're about to watch it. That's what's actually happening here. This isn't just some clump of cells or some parasite. This is a human being, a unique individual human life that has a future that's a boy or a girl that could grow up and have a beautiful life that instead is about to be murdered in the scene for our, literally for our entertainment. That's what's about to happen here. I can't imagine anything more dark. Movies and card games, so we're ready. Great. All right, we're just going to do a quick physical exam, and then we'll get your medication. Any questions? It's not going to go on all day. Hey, Bailey. Hey, when I call you eight times in a row, it means pick up. Sorry, Richard and I are trying to fix a budget situation. There's a hundred people out there. Well, right then now. call in reinforcements for crowd control. What do you want us to do all? The one thing that this show does get right is the power of pro-life protest. So keep doing it, guys. Keep showing up. Be part of 40 Days for Life. Be part of your local pro-life organizations. 
keep showing up on the sidewalks of abortion clinics peacefully, prayerfully, but boldly, and never stop until the killing is ended. Crisis protocols on the second shelf. If you're not sure, you can take some time to think about it. I'm sure. I just don't like pills. Okay. Hmm. I'm two years older than my mom was when she had me. She was married. They lived in a town home, and when I look back at pictures, she seems like a grown-up. But I'm not there yet. I'm still working through the lasting damage she did to me. So maybe one day I will be mentally ready to take that on, but right now, I can't. I can't be a mother. But I can be an aunt. I can and will be the most incredible aunt to your baby. Do you want me to play you some music? I mean, she says I can't be a mother. She already is a mother. She already is a mother. It's such a heart-wrenching scene and maddening scene because it's so chock full of lies. She's already a mother. And this friend of hers who's there, she says, I'll be an aunt to your baby. Why doesn't the friend, if she's a real friend, look her back in the eyes and say, you can be a mother. You got this. You got this. And I'm here to help you. That's true friendship, by the way. Playing music as a soundtrack to you as you murder your new tiny child is not friendship. It's horrible. It's a scene that's just, it's heart-wrenchingly horrible and it's maddening because it's so full of lies. Also, the thing about her mother saying, my mother damaged me, so I'm not ready to be a mother. Listen, none of us have perfect parents. Obviously, we don't know the character in this film with her exact story. Everybody has a different story. But your own trauma that you experience as a child, we can heal from that. There is healing for us, for any of us who have ch challenges from the way we were raised. But our challenges should never mean the death of a child in the future, that we have the right to somehow kill a child. It's like she's almost using this as a justification for what she's doing. Oh, I'm not going to be a good mother because of my own childhood. I'm not ready for it. Get the healing you need. But remember, you're already a mother. And even worse than anything you can do to traumatize a child is to kill a child and not even give that child a chance to live. You do a playlist for my abortion. You made me one for when I give birth. So different. Yeah, it is okay. so different. Cards it is. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. Okay, so again, such ridiculousness coming from the screenwriters here trying to make pro-lifers out to be violent. According to the FBI, which isn't a particularly pro-life government institution right now, the FBI has shared that since Dobbs, since Roe v. Wade's overruling, 70% of violence and threats has come from guess who? Not pro-lifers, from the pro-abortion side. So already this is an extremely out of context and false scenario that they're presenting to make pro-lifers out to be violent when pro-lifers are the peaceful ones and the attacks have been on pregnancy resource centers and on pro-life organizations coming from pro-abortion militant groups like Jane's Revenge and other groups that are out to attack pro-lifers. In conclusion, Grey's Anatomy, Four Pinocchios, if this was the Washington Post and you had the rating system, lies everywhere. Every single scene is constructed as a lie. It's bad writing to begin with. It's even bad drama, bad characterization of people. And it's it's just nonsense. It's pro-abortion propaganda nonsense. And I hope if you have friends that enjoy this TV series, you can chat, chat with them about it, share your opinion, because this is brain designed to brainwash people. And unfortunately, if people watch it and they don't have any, they're in their own pro-abortion bubble, they need to hear some truth to the crazy lies that they're watching.